This is a demo of the different ways of moving between screens in Gorilla. Let's uh, preview this task that I've set up and then we'll look at the details. This is a demo of different ways of moving between screens and also a demonstration that without a way of moving between screens, you can get stuck. Click the next button. The continue button. One option is a continue button like this. Another option is to set a time limit so that the screen auto advances, like that just did. And this can be done with and without a visible countdown. Here the countdown is visible. The final way is via a wide range of response zones. By default, using a response zone means the participant will move onto the next screen automatically after they have responded. I've misspelled that. Little baby elephants are cute. Getting stuck. Your task will get stuck like this if you do not provide a way for a participant to move on to the next screen. So here there's no continue button, I haven't set a time limit screen and there's no response buttons and so I am stuck. There's nothing to tell Gorilla that it should move on. Let's return to the configuration and see um, how these were all set up. So this is how you set up a continue button. First of all, I've got the fixation cross with these settings and then I have a rich text zone with no settings and just with the continue button. One option is the continue button and then here you can see I've got this other widget which is a continue button here the zone type is a continue button this is here near the top in the zone type setting. So let's preview that and we're going to preview just the continue button Blah, blah, blah. The continue button. One option is a continue button. Okay, let's look at the other option. There is a time limit option. So again, we've got our fixation cross. And here I've got my rich text zone that says time limit screen. Another option is to set a time limit so that the screen auto advances. I've then got an image here of the elephant and then I've got this time limit. Let me show you this item. It's called time limit screen. It's a zone type. It's down here near the bottom. And I've set the time limit to automatically advance to the next screen after 500 milliseconds. That's five seconds. The only difference between this time limit one and time limit two is that here I'm also said display the countdown timer for the last 500 milliseconds. I could change that to 300 milliseconds so then it would have nothing to begin with and then it would go three, two, one at the end. But those are the two options there with the time limit screen. Let's have a look at both of those. Here's time limit one. So here you can't see the countdown timer but after five seconds it will move on to the end. Or I could do the version with the countdown timer. So you can see, you can see the 54321 underneath. So this is useful if you want to be forcing people to respond in time. The next version we look at is with a response zone. So here, the final way, and there are lots of different response zones you could use. Here I've just used text buttons, but you could use image buttons, you can have a slider, um, you can have a Likert scale, lots of different options here. Um, so these are buttons, let me show you what these are. You go response button text so here are all response button image text paragraph response slider rating scale drop down lots of different options and then when you're using a response button you need to set this setting if you want it to automatically go forward of enable sudden death so it's the first answer is recorded only so as soon as they respond once it will move forward automatically Let's have a look at this in action. So here are my buttons and as soon as I click on one, it moves forward. The final version, the stuck version is here. I've got some text and I've got an image, but I've got nothing. I don't have an X button. I don't have um, a time limit and I don't have any response buttons so there's no way for the participant to respond and to tell Gorilla they're ready to move forward. 
The other thing you might have noticed in this task is I've got multiple spreadsheets set up. So I have a spreadsheet here with all of the different versions, which is what I showed you at the beginning. And then I have one of each one individually, which I showed you as we were going through. This can be really helpful, particularly when you're debugging something, you could set up um, a spreadsheet just with specific trials that you want to look out, out for, so you're not having to go through your whole task every single time. Um, you click the Add Spreadsheet button to add a new spreadsheet. So you have lots of them in your list. And you can rename them and you can remove them. 